This is the Redux video of the USB host expandable storage modification. And here's the splash screen to show that everything is properly installed. And I'm now on the main GUI. I have a bunch of games here and the first thing you notice is that fonts are now working. The Andaman A27 did an excellent job in doing this custom font and getting it to me and uh, I love it. It's a comic book sand style. It's amazing. But uh, one of the other things that is adjusted in this uh, change is that I'm now able to run 7 zipped Super Nintendo games, Genesis games, and so on. I'll show you how to do that once I switch over to the computer in a few. But I'm going to load 3 Ninjas Kickback. It's through SNES 9X. I'm using the dual core version so I could use the classic command lines that I used to use on NES Classic. And if you haven't played this game, it's one of the best Super Nintendo games there are. And it's only outdone by the Sega CD version with its phenomenal soundtrack. And TurboGrafx CD and Sega CD, even the bad games have pretty damn good soundtracks. It just comes with the territory. But even the bad games could have their entertainment value. Be sure to try this one out on Sega CD. And I'm going to do a brief test of uh, TurboGrafx CD to see if that runs on here. Gate of Thunder. And this game has a phenomenal soundtrack. And Lords of Thunder has a great soundtrack too. And that's one game that was just abnormally large and almost impossible to run on the NES Classic, SNES Classic without ripping it down to just the ISO and compressing it. You had to remove the music to be able to do it, but I, you can run it on this uh, USB host modification. It's amazing. And I'm a big fan of, like I said, the Sega CD and TurboGrafx CD soundtracks in general. They're all amazing in my opinion. This is Gate of Thunder. Great epic, like, Metal Edge soundtrack. Definitely check it out. I'm gonna stop shooting here and just dodge enemy fire in this uh, bullet hell type shooter just so you can better hear the music for a few seconds here. Okay, and uh, the other thing is I also have a mouse and keyboard connected right now. And I'm able to run Doom, Quake, Doom 2 as well, and they run great with the keyboard and mouse on here. But everything's working great here. I have the fonts, I'm able to run 7-zip compression. And I'm going to switch over to the computer and show you a few details, and then you guys can pretty much enact this into your own setup. First off, if you get today's update, once I update it, in the advanced users folder, I now have a cheat sheet which has a few notes related to this whole modification. So you can read through it. It has the general steps from my last video. Just read it and go through it. But also in here, Dan the Man A27 did a little cool thing here where you have Hashi version 2.21e and Hashi version 2.21f. And with these specific ones, if you use them, once you have the games here, you can go into your settings, pages folder structure, custom show folder manager every time. And I'd recommend doing this before you uninstall Hashi and do it from you know scratch. There's other ways to do this, but I'm trying to keep things simple and streamlined for now. But given that you have folder setup already done and you would typically go to do sync, if you have Hashi uninstalled, it's going to do this. It's going to ask you to flash your custom kernel, but instead, I'm going to hold down the shift key on my keyboard, and it's in the notes that in the cheat sheet, then I'm going to click sync. Now I'm going to be able to navigate over to the flash drive, the game's hash sheet folder, and just copy them directly into that folder and run them. That's really sweet. The parentheses are still an issue. I'll give you an example of this too. So you might try to load a certain game, have the core installed, the command line right, and it might not run. 
So right here I have three ninjas kickback. The name of the zipped file is fine, but if I look inside, I have parentheses on the USA. So you could uh, just remove those. And you could do it inside the zip or outside the zip, and the moment you remove these, the game will load. Here's the nice thing, though. If you change the outside file, like if I rename this, then I'd have to edit the desktop file or rename it in Hashi2 and re-edit. But if I just go inside it using 7-zip, it doesn't matter what the name of the file is inside here, because it's only reading the exterior file initially. So I'm just renaming that, letting it save. Now this game will load in uh, the USB host modification. The other things you're going to want to note here, in my cheat sheet here, I said as the very first thing you're going to want to do is do your folder setup. Then I would uninstall Hackshi, which you've seen in the previous video. Then pick the HMODs that you want to use. But there's two HMODs here that were not in the previous setup that will help you out here. One is Font Fix. The other is uh, Tiny7Zip. By installing these, and I have two font fixes in here. One's a standard one. And the second is the comic book style I'm using right now. So you'd want to install one of these two, along with the Tiny 7-Zip. This is so you can run the 7-Zip Super Nintendo games, Genesis games, and so on. And if you do have any issues using any of these, just uninstall them for now and uh, try it without them. But they've been working fine for me and for others that have tested them. So anyways, I have the cheat sheet together. Everything's good to go. And then I'm going to go over the steps of the actual process again. So after you uninstall Hashi, install the HMODs, you go into the Hashi GUI again. If you remember my uh, steps, the word association steps from the last one would be, seriously, don't you effing remember me. So I refer to these options right on the interface here. Let me get this lined up so it makes it a little bit easier to follow here. So we have the seriously for stock. That'd be copying the kernel into the actual dump folder here. And I have the NES kernel right here that I copied in from my previous Hashi setup. And there's an SNES kernel that you can copy in there as well. After you do that, you want to dump the kernel, which would be the dump kernel image one. When that process is done, you don't want to do the U, which would be the unpack kernel. And then you do the F, which would be the flash kernel. Then you do the R, which would be the rebuild kernel. And then you do the M, which would be the memboot kernel, you know, the memboot. And if you decide you want to add any more HMODs or uninstall any HMODs, you just come back and you open up this GUI, and you just have to memboot again before you go back to using the flash drive and the SNS Classic. Now I'm going to show you another thing that's really interesting. I'm going to switch back over. Now if I power down the system, and I remove the flash drive, then I power back on, I still get the splash screen, but I'll have a different load once I'm past the splash screen. I have the default 21 SNES game, so you're not tethered to the flash drive at all times. You can play without it and use the default 21 games. But now I'm going to plug the flash drive back in, power the system off, then I'm going to power it back on. And the last thing I'm going to show you in this video today is going to be one of the most epic songs I've ever heard in any video game ever. And that's going to be the closing credits to this video. It's on PlayStation 1. And one thing I'd like to know before I do that is uh, I'm running Neo Geo on here. And rather than install the Neo Geo BIOS HMOD, I just want onto the onto the games folder and want into each game folder 
basically directly and copied the Neo Geo file right into the folder along with the game zip. That's how I chose to do it so I could run more than one Neo Geo as far as main 2003, 2010, Final Burn Alpha 2016, etc. But I'm going to go into the final test here. You're just going to see the end closing credits of one of the most epic video game songs I've ever heard. It's Ryzen, Ryzen Zan Samurai Gunman, which is a great cult game that's very, very unknown, but it has a great, great opening credit sequence here. Once upon a time, a blue eyed boy. Hope you enjoyed the video and enjoy this great song. That evil was bigger than his gun. So he followed the footsteps of a mysterious master to the Far East, where he learned the secrets of the sword and came back home with the heart of a gunman and the soul of a samurai. Turned his world around. He changed his name and learned the Shogun way.